Hi everyone, welcome to the FF Salon at Money 2020. My name is Emily Redding. Uh, my name is Matt Williamson. Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. We also have Jose with us as well. Uh, what are you guys doing today? What have you decided? What's happening with the hair? Just study up. Get it into, it's already pretty good, just get it into. You do have a fabulous head of hair, can I say, Matt? No, you do. Okay. It's I'll take the win for that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're off to a good start. Okay, let's start with the basics. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do, what's your job role, and where? As if you were explaining it to your grandma. Okay, say. I've tried that before, it didn't go so well, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. So um, I've just recently started at Indava. Um, okay. I'm Senior Vice President and Industry Principal covering payments and banking. Uh, and what essentially that means is my role is to find the gaps and then remove friction externally and internally within the company. So what I mean by that is we work with big customers, MasterCard, WorldPay, other people like that, but also the payments market is evolving so rapidly as we know from real-time payments, real-time fraud, onboarding, you, know, you name it, payments covers everything. Mm -hmm. um, so my job is to help spot the gaps where we can help our customers, not just from building things for them, but also an advisory capacity. So this is where the market's going, these are the things you need to be aware of, and then obviously help them achieve those goals. Excellent. And you're here for the full, the full, full week? Yeah, I leave on the Friday. Full shebang. The full okay, great. Perfect. Just in time for the weekend, though. You'll probably be exhausted by the Absolutely. time you get home, but that's no, that's no problem. Um, why did you decide to do what you do now? Talk to me a little bit about how you got into this career. Okay, that's a, that's a really interesting question. We could be here a long time. Um, <laughs> I'm the classic, I flunked really hard at school, really, really heavily, um, failed everything, and took a long time to kind of find my way into to what I was going to do. So I did everything from logistics planning, um, working in factories, all sorts. Um, but then I ended up at Thomas Cook. Um, in fraud investigation really early on Wow! Um, and it kind of started from there and it I realized that I could spot gaps where people couldn't necessarily um, and that's really where everything started so in starting fraud then moved into payments and commercial foreign exchange um, across to banking so I was at Citibank for quite a while um, and then moved into the fintech sector with MySys and Finastra and others Form 3 who are, who are represented well here this year so yeah, a lot of it has been about seeing the gaps ahead of people and then being able to articulate how to get there and what you need to do to, um, to meet the outcome, but also always being customer centric, which I know has become very much a bit of a buzz cliche phrase, but tech is irrelevant in truth. Um, people are still too focused on this is the latest tech. You, know, you go back five, six years, it was cloud. Now it's real time services. But if you're not building viable outcomes for your customers, that, that make their life easier, then it's irrelevant how shiny your tech is. You know, if we use a bank as an example, they had lots of bespoke services in the background, but your customer doesn't care how bespoke the back office is. If they can't achieve what they want to do, like you know, check their balance, move money around, it doesn't matter if it's bespoke. Just yeah. make it easy, make it seamless, and your consumers are happy. That's a very good piece of advice. What do you, what do you think at the moment is your, is your biggest focus for customer centricity. I mean, we love a buzzword here, but what does that actually, what does that really mean in your day-to-day -day sort of driver in your role? Well, if you think about, you have multi, multi-faceted age ranges now across banking, financial services. So you've got to be able to appeal to the younger generations and get them onboarded as a new customer while also servicing older generations. So, you know, we're moving towards a cashless society, but that doesn't suit all, all levels of, of social standing. So. My focus really is how can they extract the best value for their customer um, because also it's harder to acquire a new customer now as it is but it's easy to lose them. You can go to the app store on your phone and download you know, a Monzo, Revolut, whoever on board and ditch what you perceive as a legacy brand or traditional brand. So it's how do you gain new customers but how do you keep your existing ones. And the way you keep your existing ones is you understand them and you make sure you give them the services that they need. So you know, buy now, pay later as an example. Um, you know, Gen Alpha, Gen Z are not interested in credit cards, but they are interested in buy now, pay later, as an example. So it's, but older generations still quite like credit. Yep. So we really have to find that balance between the two. Yeah, very true, very true. And it, I mean, it, it, you very much strike me as someone that's tried lots of different industries and is clearly very, very passionate about what you do. What's your advice to somebody that 
I don't know, is, is, is from um, a, a similar kind of outcome from school. I struggled with school. Um, I was, I'm dyslexic and I, I found that the kind of the natural way of teaching yeah. and engaging with students and especially young adults as well when I started my career was still very much focused on the kind of school ethos. Yeah. What would you say is, is your single best piece of advice that you've been given or you've followed? Because it seems like yeah. you've, you've really found that kind of logical, uh, very broad spectrum career that's, that you're really enjoying? Yeah, I think, I think the younger generations are addressing this already, but there's more confidence. You know, you're seeing 18 year olds start their own company. Yeah. Whereas when I was 18, it was you know, know your place, get, earn your stripes, take your time and eventually you'll get there. Whereas now the younger generations just will go for it and see what happens. They don't seem to have the stigma of failure in the way it used to be 20, 30 years ago. So I would say, you know, accept you're gonna make mistakes. You're never gonna get it perfect. It's better to start and work it out than try and make it perfect and not do anything and not go anywhere. Um, and also, people aren't always on your side. They may appear to be, but actually they've got their own agenda. So if, you're, if you have some you know, humility, That's a great piece of you're advice. trying to do the right thing in the right way, then you'll find your own rhythm. That's brilliant. And then is, is hindsight a wonderful thing? Is there anything in your career that you've looked back on and you've thought, given that time again, or given that opportunity again, I would have done something differently? Um, I used to think yes, but now I'd say no, because they're the lessons you learn that make you the person you are today. Yes. So I can look back at some of the things when I was first in management and realize I was deeply insecure and overcompensating. And I did, okay. did stupid things that actually didn't help or I tried to be in every meeting and tried to demonstrate my value at every opportunity and outshine others when actually uh, you know, a real leader actually elevates everyone else. They don't need to be the loudest voice in the room. I think that's, that's what I'd recommend to everyone is try and help other people, even if it's an introduction to someone else. It doesn't have to be grandiose gestures. It could literally be, I think you and you would get on and there could be a really good connection here yeah. and broker that introduction and then leave. You don't need to make a song and dance about it. Um, and also, and I do a lot of mentoring for grads, make connections, take the opportunity, but also then pass it on. So for a lot of the grads that I started with 15, 20 years ago, they're now in positions of leadership yes. and they're doing the same thing. Yes. And they're watching the videos or sharing the videos, TED Talks that I did 15 years ago with them to their you know, men mentees, I think that's the yes. word, is it? Mentees. Mentees yes. is a yes. word. Um, and that for me is perfect because you're passing it, you know, you're passing on pushing it forward and that is more to me than I got a big bonus or I've got this senior title in the industry etc. Well I have to say the Barnet's looking brilliant. How are we getting on? We've got a little yeah, time check here. Okay so last final questions then. What, what are you looking forward to to get out of money 2020? I think it's to understand there's always perceived themes okay. that, are, you know, that are scheduled, the, the briefings, the plenaries, etc. sessions. Um, and then you get to the end of the week and you realise they were undertone themes. That's what I'm looking to understand is what's the real undertone here. Is it actually all about fraud, real-time fraud? Because we're seeing the movement, we're talking money obviously, um, from traditional rails, credit cards, into account-to-account -account payments. And the fraud that's associated with that now that we're seeing happening more and more, um, takes the onus away from the providers because in you know, merchant services you pay fees to move money around and then if there's a fraud that's where you get your recompense from whereas with account to account payments it's instant mm. and you're liable as the consumer if you make the payment so I'm going to be curious to see how they're going to manage that yeah, I think it's going to be AI yep. machine learning that type of thing that's the bit I really want to understand more about this week okay, fantastic okay final question uh, what what's on the horizon for you over the next 12 months that's a great question. So I'm seven weeks into my new job. So yeah, exactly. So a lot I think, then. A lot, yeah, a lot. I think for me, there's so much to tackle. It's about prioritizing what are the top three things we want to achieve in the next year and then addressing that accordingly. Um, but we're doing incredibly well already in Darva. We're existing client base. Um, this week is a lot of meeting new clients, prospective clients. Um, and then really not looking at us from an engineering services organization, but as we talked at the beginning, What's our thought leadership? What do we think is going to happen in the future? Where should they be considering putting their money, time, effort? Um, so that's the really exciting bit I think about this year. Well, you're going to have a busy 12 months. A great one. A great a one, yeah. one. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. I think we're ready for the, the big reveal yeah, in a moment. Thank you.
That looks great. Perf perfectly quaffed. Yes. Right. Here we go. Uh, you see if I can replicate it tomorrow yeah. morning. <laughs> there you go. That's great. Thank nice. you very much. Yeah, nice really and smooth. Nice. nice and groomed. Cool. Perfect. Thank oh, you very thank much, Thank you Jose. so yeah. much. Thank you. That was fantastic. Pleasure.